Well, this is the wonderful day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Good evening, First Baptist. Good evening, family. Good evening, friends. Welcome to a night of worship as we cement in our hearts our partnership as pastor and people and community in vision for what we know God has in store for us. Even as we look to charter what are again unprecedented and unpredictable moments, we know we have a God who is able to guide us and keep us and there is nothing that we will see that he has not seen and so we've come tonight just to celebrate this moment together, to culminate this month of sharing and casting vision. And I pray that you will be blessed by our time together. Please, if you have not shared or participated in the sharing of this broadcast before we came on, please do so now. Just click the share button. Go ahead and build your family's watch party. Invite friends invite co-workers again invite other family members tonight is just a night of celebrating vision sitting under the word of god and being together launched out into the deep so whether you're even a part of this family or not we want to even submit the vision that we believe god has individually and personally over your lives as well as your family and the church family where you serve hear these words from the psalmist psalm 1 Psalm 1 shares these words, reading from the New Living Translation. Oh, the joy of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or stand around with sinners, or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. But not the wicked. They are like worthless chaff scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly. Hear this, for the Lord watches over the path of the godly. But the path of the wicked leads to destruction. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you today for this opportunity that you've given us all day to this point to live a life on purpose, to live a life with vision, a life of hope, a life of expectancy. And so now God, as we come together as pastor, as people, as pastor and people and community, both locally and globally, cementing our walk for 2021, Lord, we ask that you give us again a fresh sacrifice on tonight. Lord, inhabit our praise. Allow us to celebrate you in spirit and in truth. And those things, Lord, that would keep us from being our best selves, living out our fullest potential in this year for your glory and the good of your people, Lord, we ask that you remove it right now. Create in us a clean heart, Lord, and renew in us freshly a right spirit. And God, will be careful to give you praise for all that you allow us to accomplish by the power and person of your Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, to walk with integrity in this journey. Help us to be trees planted by the riverbank so that in this season we can bear fruit to your glory and for the nourishment of your people. Lord, thank you again tonight afresh for this opportunity of worship. Bless this space and this time. And Lord, for those who will come on and those who will come on in the days and even weeks to come, allow them to be empowered by our worship. This is our prayer. These are your people. This is your night of vision. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and praise God. Come on, put your hands together. Let's celebrate our God and let's welcome our music ministry as they come. Come on, you ought to open up your mouth and give them praise that the God you serve reigns. If you know he reigns over every circumstance, over every situation, over every problem, you ought to shout, Father, you reign. Father, you reign. Father, you reign. Hallelujah. I come to give him praise on tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody clap your hands and worship with me. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, oh. 
Hallelujah. Somebody bless him with me. Hallelujah. 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 Let's sing right here. Say, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Sing, Lord, you reign. God reign. My God reign. Our God reign. Our God reign. Lord, you reign above every name. Above every name. Sing it again. Say, my God reign. My God reign. Our God reign. Our God reign. Lord, you reign above every name. Above every name. Sing it with me. My God reign. My God reign. Our God reign. Lord, you reign above. With power and majesty. With power and majesty. You reign. And we give you glory, Father, because you do reign. Say with power. Dominion authority. You reign. Let's raise it all over the house. Everybody. Oh, my God reign. Sing my God praise. My God praise. Sing our God praise, y'all. Tell him, Lord, you reign above. Come on, he reigns with power. With power and majesty. Dominion authority. You reign. That's a good place to give him praise right there. Say with power. Hey, dominion authority. You reign. Let's lift it everybody. One more time. Say, my God reigns, come on. Sing, our God reigns, y'all. Lord, you reign above every day. Every day, say, my God reigns. Sing, our God reigns, y'all. Tell him, Lord, you reign above every day. Come on, say, over my circumstance. You've given me another chance. You reign. That's the reason to shout hallelujah right there. Say, oh, for my circumstance, you've given me another chance. You reign, and we thank you for it, Lord. Say, oh, for my circumstance, you've given me, you reign. Thank you, Lord, for another chance, another chance to bless you over.
The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. New Testament scripture, Galatians 6 chapter, verses 6 through 10. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not marked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them that are of the household of faith. God's word for God's people. Come on, everybody, lift your hands. Just say something good to the Lord tonight. Oh, say, Father, we love you. We want you to speak to our hearts on tonight, Father. Speak to me, Lord, speak to me, oh. Say, speak to my heart, Holy Spirit. Give me the words, Lord, that will bring life. Words on the wings of the morning, the dark night will fade away. If you will, just speak to my heart, Lord. Everybody help me say, Holy Spirit, message of love to encourage me, lifting my heart, lifting my heart from the snare, how you love me and care Oh, this is our prayer. Oh, speak to my heart now. That's what I want you to do. Speak to my heart. I'm ready to hear from you. Say, Oh God, I want you to speak to me. Did anybody's heart desire? Oh my God, speak to my heart, Lord. Yeah. Give me your holy word. If I can hear from you. Then I know what to do. I won't go alone. Said I'll never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word everybody say. Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart, Jesus. Give me your holy word. Then I know what to do. It says I won't go alone. I never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide, guide me, Lord. Oh, say, speak to my heart, Jesus. I need a word from you. Then I know what to do. Then I know what to do. Then I'll never go on my own. Oh, 
to be here, be able to just talk to you, God, be able to pour out all our hearts and love on back to you, Lord, for blessing us to be able to be alive again today, Lord. So speak to our hearts tonight, Lord. Speak to our hearts so that we may hear what your will is in our life today, Lord, so that we may be able to talk to that one who is needing salvation right now, God so that we may be able to read your word to a child who's trying to learn who their father really is, God. God, we love you, we trust you, we honor you, we praise you, and we thank you for allowing us to be alive today, God. God, I ask that you bless the service today. Bless Pastor Faison as he bring that mighty word, Lord, speak to his heart as he speak to us, God. And allow us to hear your voice in those words, Lord. Allow us to hear the mighty voice of the roaring lion of Judah, Lord. Lord, allow Jesus to come alive in our hearts, Lord, with the Holy Spirit. And allow us to be that beacon of light on the hill so everyone can know that we are children of God and we are here forever and ever and ever to live with you, Lord. God, you're such a great God. And we honor and praise you. And we thank you so much. Lord, reach down in our hearts. Cleanse it, Lord. Wash it with his son, Lord. White as snow. Father, I ask that you pour your spirit out upon us like you said in your word, Father. And allow us to prophesy, to show those who don't know you who you really are, God. And that is the Lord and Savior of this world, the King of kings. Lord of lords, the creator of heavens and earth, the almighty one. And we praise your name. It's about you, God, and not about ourselves. And God, we just want to turn over our lives to you. And we want to do your will, Father. I surrender right now to you, God. We surrender right now to your will, Father. Yes, Lord. That's all you want to hear is yes. So, Father, we say yes to your will tonight. Thank you, God. Thank you for our Pastor Watson, Lord. Continue to bless him to have that vision and to be able to lead us like he has always been, God. Bless us all. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. And we give you the praise. So speak to our hearts tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Well, again, we celebrate our God. We thank him for, again, this time of worship, for this time of celebration. Come on, let's celebrate what we've already experienced in this time of worship as God has allowed us these moments to worship him in spirit, to worship him in truth. Listen, again, tonight is a night of vision. Tonight is a night of cementing in hearts and minds, pastor and people. What God has laid out before us over the past two weeks, we've talked about vision. We've laid out vision for the life of this fellowship on our Wednesdays, trying to make sure that we are prepared to launch out into the deep, to serve and to celebrate our God wonderfully, to make sure, ladies and gentlemen, that we're always seeking his face. One of the quotes I shared with you this week, I'll share it again tonight as I prepare to introduce again our guest pastor for the night who will preach over us and pray over us, but also as we prepare to give as it relates to vision. Dr. Cynthia Hale shared this in one of her devotionals, and I shared it with you over these past two Wednesdays. I'll share it with you again. She shared these words, dreams and visions are the revelation of God's purposes and plans for us and the God-sized potential of our ministries. She shares a vision is a gift of God given through the pastor to the congregation. It is meant to give meaning and purpose, set direction, and unleash the power and possibility for life and ministry beyond our imagination. And then George Barner comes behind that, in the power of vision, and shares these words. Vision is a clear mental picture of a preferable future. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what, again, over these past two Wednesdays, over this past month, I've been trying to share with you the mental picture that God has invested in us Yes, we charted vision to 2025, but again, each year carries the weight of responsibility in making sure we put the framework in place, the infrastructure in place, so that when God blesses us to dawn that year, we're able to again build toward the brighter future he still yet has in store. And so tonight we've come to again worship our God. This is how we've chosen to cement our vision together in worship together, hearing the word of God, hearing the preached word of God. As we prepare to hear the preacher, I want you to grab your gifts in your hand. For tonight, we give toward vision. We give toward the opportunity for God to continue to again give us volume, give us weight, give us expanse as it relates to carrying out the work of the kingdom give us territory. So I want you to grab your gifts as we prepare to give on tonight. I want you to grab your gifts. We've been reading again Proverbs chapter 11 verse 24 and 25 as it relates to our time of giving where the proverbial writer says these words, give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Go ahead and grab your gifts, whether it's physically, those you are planning to mail, or whether it's electronically, even now, as we give to our God, as we give tonight in relationship to vision. You can give via Givelify, our app, you know, 433. Just look up the church's address, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Jackson, Tennessee. 38301, you can give via text to give. You can give via our ministry, one app. You can give via the website again, or you can mail your giving to the church. We would love to have you so into this opportunity. Family and friends, if you're viewing us for the first time and you believe that this is great ground, good ground, then I ask you to go ahead and prepare to sow on tonight. Let's lift our gifts. Let's lift our gifts. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity that you give us to give, for the opportunity that you give us to sow into good ground, into great vision. 
vision that you've invested into this fellowship, vision that we've heard that has been carried out for over 152 years, 153 years. God, we thank you. And we ask you now, Lord, to continue to entrust your vision, your work into us. We ask you now, Lord, to continue to entrust opportunities for success in kingdom work in us so that, God, you can always get glory out of us. Now bless the gifts and bless the givers for the seed that they will sow tonight. And we'll be careful to give you praise. All glory indeed belongs to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Listen, go ahead and give now. As you're giving, I'm going to introduce our pastor for the night. So go ahead and give. I want to give you that space. I don't want to rush you. I want you to be able to give in whatever denomination you choose for tonight. We know as First Baptist, every member when it comes to vision, every Sunday, every week, we're trying to sow at least 5 to $10 per member. That's all I'm asking. And that helps us to reach our goal in 2025, but it helps us to reach our goal every year for those things that we've tasked for our ministry. We've broken down that denomination and know that's what it calls for. So I invite you to do so. If you want to do more than that, if you want to drop whatever you want to drop, believing that God, again, is going to continue to expand our territory, do so, and we'll be grateful. Listen, again, I'm grateful to have my friend and my brother here sharing with us on this year. He's launching us out into the deep this year. Normally he comes at some point within the life of our church fellowship, but this year the Lord placed it on my heart that he would lead us into this year. And so my friend and brother did not think it robbery when I text him. He checked his calendar and said, yes, I'm coming. And so I'm grateful for our friendship and our kinship. He pastors the Watson Grove Baptist Church in Nashville, Tennessee where he is beloved by his parishioners. He's also a vested student of the word of God. He again, uh, even today, this week is doing intensives as he again teaches a doctoral cohort with Payne Theological Seminary. So he's literally just got out of teaching class and came with us over to the fellowship to preach tonight. And I'm so glad he's not exhausted to do so, but he thought it not robbery to be with us. And so the next voice you will hear after our praise team will be that of the Reverend Dr. John Faison Sr., again, the pastor of the Watson Grove Baptist Church, my friend, my brother. Hear him as he comes. Come on, let's celebrate our God with our praise team. Let's lift his name high. vision. Come 
magnify with me, say, it is so. If you believe it, say, yes, it is. I believe it, say, he will do just what he said. Anybody believe it with me? He'll do it. Oh, I believe it. Come on, join me, say, it is so. Say, yes, it is. Type that right there and say, he will do just what he said. Come on, every heart, say, it is so. Yes, it is. Somebody declare it with me, it is. What? and peace be multiplied unto you in the name of God our Father and his Son Jesus the Christ. What a joy, what a privilege, and what an honor it is to stand before you tonight to declare that there is a word from the Lord. We are absolutely excited to be in this virtual sanctuary yet one more time. God has been gracious, kind, benevolent, and compassionate. God's mercies are still new every single morning, and I greet you with Jesus' joy to declare to you tonight that there still is no secret what God can do. What the Lord has done for others, he, in, he indeed can do for you. I am grateful again for the opportunity to be able to share, to greet you, and we honor God for this opportunity. I also want you to help me right there in the virtual sanctuary. Uh, in your own house, in your own car, in your office, wherever you might be. Put your hands together. Help me praise God for the pastor of this people and the angel of this assembly. My friend, my brother, visionary of the historic First Baptist Church here in Jackson, Tennessee. None other than Pastor William Watson. Come on, praise God for him. Praise God for it. Such a joy, such a blessing. Uh, such a wonderful, wonderful leader. Uh, one who has acute vision. Uh, not only the, ab the ability to see far, but the ability to see clear. And you ought to praise God for that. Every, every church doesn't have that. Amen. And so you are blessed and favored of the Lord. Listen, I am always, always uh, honored and humbled by the opportunity to speak to leaders. I believe that uh, everything rises and falls on leadership. That when it comes to vision, when it comes to strategy, when it comes to being serious and intentional about going after that which God has placed before us, that it is a time of sober reflection. It is a moment of seriousness. It is a time and a space where we have to be clear and have to be hearing from God. I didn't come to make you shout tonight. I 
That's not why I'm here. I didn't come to make you feel good. I came to share what I believe the Lord desires for us to share with you concerning the vision and the direction of where God is taking you, not only in 2021, but all the way up to 2025. There's a strategic plan already been revealed, and it is, it is uh, uh, being unveiled as you go forward. Here's what you got to know about God. God never takes you anywhere God's not already been. That when you are heading somewhere, God has already gone before you and is setting all of the pieces in place, arranging all of the components necessary for you to be able to accomplish the vision you have been assigned. So while we have walked into 2021 with questions, the God of 2021 does not have any questions. While we have been shocked by what we have experienced in this previous year and the current year, God is not scratching his head trying to figure out what is we going to do. God has already prepared every single element you need to accomplish the plan and the purpose God has assigned to your life. You do not serve a haphazard, off-the-cuff God. You serve an intentional, strategic, meticulously designing and serious thinking God. And God knows what God is doing. And I promise you, if you stick with God, trust God, follow the leading of your pastor, everything is going to be all right. Amen. Amen. Would you do me a favor and go with me in your Bibles to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 14. We're going to dive into what I believe is a familiar passage, but it's our prayer that God will give us a fresh lens through which to see this uh, word. Matthew chapter 14, beginning at verse 20. Five. Grateful again for the hospitality that has been shown to me. Uh, your pastor not only makes sure I got here safely, but he makes sure I stayed safe while I was here. Uh, heading back in the morning to get back and get ready to uh, take somebody to school. I got a daughter who's going back to college. Her college has been closed for a minute. She's going back uh, this weekend. And so we've got quite a few things happening in our world, but I'm grateful uh, for the hospitality and the kindness and the generosity of your pastor. Matthew chapter 14, beginning at verse 25. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Here's what the word reads. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came walking toward them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I'm here. Then Peter called to him. Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshiped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. This is the word of the Lord. By the people of God, say amen. Amen. I want to talk tonight with the Holy Spirit's guidance and with your prayers from the subject, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Flank me with your prayers tonight as we go to God. God, again, thank you for this day. Thank you for the chance to honor you in word and in worship. It's our prayer now that you'll let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart allow it to be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God, preach through me, to me, for me. Send a word so your people are edified, but in all things it's your name that receives the glory. I bless you for the treasure that you've placed in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God out of us. Punish not your people now for the frailty of your preacher. Allow me to say it the way you want it said. My power is not enough. I need yours. My strength is insufficient. I need you. Have your way tonight. Do what only you can do and say what only you can say. And we will be careful, intentional to give you glory, honor, and praise both now and forever. The people of God said amen. Amen. Can you imagine? Beloved, I have been blessed to attend a few schools in my life. But by far, the best school I have ever attended is the school of parenting. 
See, in that school, often I am the student and my children are the teachers. I will never forget one lesson that my oldest son, John, taught me. When he was three years old, I was a senior in college. My wife and I couldn't afford a babysitter, so often he came to class with me. Most of my teachers had no issues with John being in class, sitting in the stroller throughout the course. Uh, John was a pretty chill kid. All he needed was a pencil and some blank white paper. He was fine. I'd take him into my philosophy class or my political science class, and I'd sit him in the desk next to me, and he would draw on that blank white paper. He didn't need a lot. Didn't need a lot of attention. Didn't need a lot of uh, stuff. All he needed was his pencil, blank white sheet paper. And when he would get in that desk on that blank sheet white paper with that pencil, he wouldn't just draw anything. He would actually draw something very specific every single time. See, John loved to draw churches. John was a church baby. All of our children grew up and grow up in church, so naturally John was drawn to church things. John was very detailed in his drawing. No two churches were the same. Some churches were tall and majestic, while others were short and wide. Some had fellowship halls attached to them, and others had office space connected to them. Some of the churches he drew had daycares, and others had schools, and some of them had gyms, and others had community centers. It didn't matter what class I took John into. Once he got into that chair, and he got his pencil, and he got his blank white sheet of paper. It didn't take long before John was in his own world. No matter what was going on around him, his imagination would take him somewhere else. See, in his mind, he was a master architect. And when he allowed that imagination to run free, he could transform wherever he was into a special place. See, I, I thought, I thought I was teaching him as a three-year-old to be independent. But he was actually teaching me something about the power of imagination. See, as I look back at those years now, his imagination was actually doing something special for him that I could not detect. Today, that three-year-old imaginary master architect is now a 21-year-old college senior who will soon graduate with a degree in architectural engineering. See, the buildings he once imagined will now be the ones he desires. What he dreamed in one season, he is now doing in another. All because his imagination stayed alive, even when the conditions around him were different. Beloved, 2021 is here. And already it's got a whole lot of the stank of 2020 still on it. Pandemic, still here. People are still ignoring that. Political insanity, still here. People are still trying to ignore that too. Economic challenges are still here. That one's kind of impossible to ignore. But we're all still trying to navigate a new year feeling the pressure from the last one. But what is happening around us, I want to contend tonight, is not the greatest issue. The biggest issue we face is what can happen inside of us. See, if we're not intentional about preparing ourselves, we will let the conditions around us dictate the culture within us. We run the risk of losing our faith because of what we're facing. I want to remind you, beloved, if God brought you into 2021, it means God has plans for you here. With all the issues, all the challenges, all the problems considered, God still sovereignly selected you and I to be present in this space. Because God is intentional, there is purpose in our presence. I need you to know God's mind is made up about you regardless of how inconvenient this season might appear. 
So then, if God is convinced and ready to move us further into the purpose and the plan God has, what in the world is our problem? I tell you, our biggest problem is not the preponderance of issues. Our biggest problem is a poverty of imagination. Too fast, one more time. I want to tell you, God has already decided what your future is going to look like. God has already put everything in place that it will come to pass. It shall live and not die. It will do just what he said. God is convinced and ready to move us further in the purpose. So what's the problem? I, I want to say it again. The biggest problem we have is not the preponderance and the presence of issues. The problem we have is the poverty of imagination. That too many of us have forgotten how to dream. Too many of us are letting the lingering trauma of the last season steal our hopes for this season. I want to tell you, and I need you to hear me tonight, that the key to seeing God work in our lives this year is not the removal of our issues. It is the revival of our imaginations. Seeing God work and do miracles in our lives this year in our church and in our community is not about everything becoming perfect and all the conditions being preset the way that we desire them to be. The issue is not removing the issues. The issue is we need a revival and a renewal of our imaginations. What can you see even when it's dark? What do you have and believe is possible even when the conditions don't seem to fit? What inside of you is waiting to be birthed, not because the world looks ready, but because God says it's ready? I want you to know God is calling us, you and I, to see the conditions around us, not as obstacles, but as opportunities. That the path may not look exactly the way we desire it, but we are being called to see by faith what is still possible. And I believe if we can imagine it, God can initiate it. If we can see it, God can make that thing come to pass. Beloved, tonight I want to preach to that three-year-old with a pencil and a white blank sheet of paper inside of you. I'm talking about that little kid who knew how to block out the outside distractions and step into a world where anything was possible. I want to remind you tonight that God placed that engineer inside of you so you would be ready for this particular moment. I need you to remember that regardless of what is happening around you, you have something divine and incredible inside of you. And the tough moment we are actually in has the potential to be the catalyst for the greatest season of innovation and creativity you, this church, and this world has ever seen. And I believe that if you'll catch this word tonight. You're going to shock yourself with what God does in and through you this year. If you will let God help you to imagine what is possible, I believe you will see it come to pass. You in the virtual sanctuary tonight, you're watching by Facebook, you're watching by whatever platform you're watching, I want you to go ahead and put it in the comment section. Put it in the comment section. I still believe. I, I, I know I know stuff has messed with you this year, but put it down. Write it. Write the vision and make it plain. I still believe. I know things have gone to hell in a handbasket in the early part of 2021, but you ought to speak over yourself in the virtual sanctuary. I still believe. I know you still got scars from 2020. Shoot, you might have some from 2019 but I want you to speak over yourself that I still believe that God's word is still God's word and let God's word be true and every man be a liar that God is still able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think that God is still able to do what eyes have not seen and ears have not heard your conditions have changed but your creator has not your surroundings have shifted but your savior is the same and if God is the same yesterday today and forevermore then nothing that we walk into is a surprise or shock to God and if you can believe God God can make it happen in your life I boy I wish I had a witness in the virtual sanctuary tonight that can testify I will not walk by sight I'm gonna walk by faith 
Beloved, do me a favor. Pack up your imagination with me for a moment and come with me to the gospel of Matthew chapter 14. This is not a new story, but I hope God will help us to see it tonight with new eyes. See, it's Peter and the disciples who are in a boat on the lake heading to Gennesaret. They are heading there because God has sent them. While they are sailing on the Sea of Galilee, Jesus comes to them, Bible says, walking on the water comes to them walking on the water and it, it's, it's in this moment when Peter makes his famous request to join Jesus Jesus if it's you bid, bid me to come out there hang out with you for a minute the Bible says Jesus gives him permission and Peter walks on the water now, what is often missed about this amazing miracle is not that it happens but what's often missed is when it happens Peter walked on the water in a storm too fast check your Bible verse 30 will tell you as it describes the strong winds and the waves that were pushing and going back and forth threatening to sink the boat I mean let's, let's, let's just talk common sense right here uh, uh, if anybody were trying to walk on water do a miracle like this, wouldn't they wait for more ideal weather conditions? Wouldn't they at least want the, 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 the waves to be calm so that it's an easier chance for them to be solid and stable enough to walk? Wouldn't they be looking for clear and tranquil skies? Wouldn't they be waiting for the wind to stop blowing so they don't get out there and go topsy-turvy, but instead they're able to walk in a serene and tranquil environment? If you're trying to walk on a, walk on a, walk on a water, wouldn't you want it to not be in a storm? And when you're in a storm, aren't you safer staying in the boat? I mean, what caused Peter to make such a game-changing choice. I contend the reason he was able to make it was because he saw Jesus doing it. Seeing Jesus do it made Peter imagine himself doing the same. And the adverse conditions around them didn't even matter. His imagination demanded that he see what was possible. And because he saw it before he did it, he did it and other people got to see it. J Jesus, beloved, is still walking through storms today. In fact, he is right in the middle of the ones that met us when we walk into 2021. And if our imaginations, beloved, are big enough, we will also see ourselves walking with Jesus in those same storms. I need you to know, storms don't decide whether we walk on water with Jesus. A faith-filled imagination does. Storms don't dictate whether it's time to step out or not. What dictates is if you can see Jesus Jesus in the middle of it because that's what increases and heightens your imagination to believe that something greater is still possible. Peter, Peter here can teach us some powerful lessons about daring to imagine. Can, can you see beyond the conditions you're in? Can you trust God beyond the stuff that makes sense to you? Can you trust and believe that God's will for you has not changed regardless if the conditions around you do change? Can I get you to believe and see that God's will for you is still established and settled in, uh, in heaven and it is still possible in the earth? Can you Imagine. P P Peter. Peter teaches us some powerful principles and lessons about imagining something greater and seeing what's possible. If, if Peter was here tonight, Peter would tell us uh, from his excursion onto the sea, he would tell us that here's what you got to do. Uh, you you, you want to see great things? You want to you, you, you wanna imagine possibility and see it come to pass? Here's what you got to do. Number one, you got to imagine your possibilities based on God's capacity. I said you have to see your possibility based on God's God's capacity. See, everything for the children of God, you and I ought to be different, including our imagination. That our faith in what is possible should be different because that faith is not based upon what we can do. It is built on what God can do. 
Peter here does not ask to walk on the water by his own original idea. Peter, in case you forgot, is a fisherman. He's got a healthy respect for the sea, for lakes, for rivers, and for the water. He knows naturally and humanly walking on the water ain't possible. But everything changes when he sees Christ doing what seemed to previously be impossible. His excitement shifts, his expectation changes, and his imagination is ignited to do something he's never done before. So Peter says and asks Jesus to let him walk on the water only because he saw Christ go first. He now has a new idea of what's possible. And that idea of what's possible is based on Christ's capacity and ability, not his own capacity and ability. Peter says, I'm imagining something different because I know Christ can make it happen. Beloved, many of us struggle with the idea of imagining something different and greater because we are measuring it by what we can accomplish. And when we inventory what we bring to the table, we know it really ain't that much. So instead of expecting something great, we shrink our imaginations to the size of our own ability. I'm preaching better than you typing a man. But a faith-filled imagination does not look for the impossible because it believes that we can do it by ourselves. No, a faith-filled imagination is ignited because we know what God can do. And so maybe we need to imagine great things in the future by reminding ourselves of the great things God has done in our past. Maybe we'll get the, the, the revelation and the motivation to believe that the future can be amazing, great, and spectacular if we will remind ourselves how great, amazing, and spectacular God has been in our yesterdays. Is there anybody here that says, now you down my road? Because if, if anything that 2020 has taught me, it was that God is able to keep me from falling. If anything that last year taught me is that God can be a keeper, God can be a comforter, God can take care of me when I don't know how to take care of myself. Well, beloved, I don't want you to shout just off the testimony of your yesterdays. I want you to use your yesterdays as the catapult to believe in your tomorrows, that if he has done it then, he can still do it now. And you got to make sure your dreams are the size of God's ability and not yours. You're going to imagine something great? You're going to see a reset in 2021? You're going to see fresh things, fresh vision, fresh ideas, fresh innovation and creativity in this year? You've got to imagine your possibility based on God's capacity. Here's the second thing Peter would teach us. Peter would also tell us tonight that imagination, I need you to hear me, imagination will be risky. But the reward is always greater. Don't, don't, don't cut me off. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't try to, don't try to go scrolling down, trying to talk to somebody else, try to hear something else. Now, I want you to hear me tonight because I, 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 need, I need you to understand that just as exciting as imagination is, imagination can also be scary. Imagination will be risky, but the reward is great. Make no mistake about it, beloved. Daring to imagine can be a challenging enterprise. There will be risk involved. Last time you spelt faith, I need you to know faith doesn't start with an F. Faith starts with an R. How do you spell faith? Here's how you spell it. R-I-S-K. That's how you spell faith because whenever you walk in faith, risk is involved. You probably will have to go alone at first. But when you risk imagining something different, you learn that the rewards are always greater. Peter here, again, is a prime example of this reality. You got your Bible, you need it. Verse 28, Bible says, Peter asked Jesus, let him walk on the water. Verse 29, without hesitation, Jesus says, bust a move. Come on. Bible says, Peter's imagination of what's possible is now soaring because he heard from the Savior that it's okay to come out here. 
he got permission from the one who made the sea that walking on the sea was okay. So Peter's imagination is now soaring as he steps off of the plank of the boat and steps on to the water. He places his foot on the lake only to discover that it's not just in the lake, it's on it. He is stepping on something that's solid when it should have been giving away. And the Bible says Peter starts walking on the water. But Peter learns very quickly, just like we do, how risky faith-filled imagination can be. You got your Bible, you need it, verse 30. Text says he, get dis he got distracted by the wind and he started to sink. He starts to sink because he did something that was risky and required faith. That, that's why the other 11 disciples were still in the boat. And only one disciple is on the water. Because the riskiness of imagination will always make the boat crowded. If you're trying to play it safe, trying to make everything make sense before you do it, you're going to always be surrounded by crowds. The boat is full. But out there in faith, water walking land, there's plenty of room. Because everybody ain't stepping out on this level of belief, risk, and faith. The riskiness of imagination makes the boat crowded while the water has plenty of open space. And if we're honest, that risk has made many of us resolve to spend 2021 in the boat. I know you can't say amen, just look amen. Yep, yep, some of us have decided 2021, I ain't playing games. I'm staying in the boat. See, we know how susceptible our faith is to distraction. Matter of fact, we almost drowned in 2020, and we can't afford another experience like that. We don't watch other people go under, and it just don't make sense to us. It don't seem worth it. I don't understand it. I don't get it. Yet, while we are settling because of the risk, we are also missing the reward that comes with imagining something greater. You still got your Bible? You need it. Verse 31, Bible says, while Peter is sinking, Jesus reaches out and grabs him. While, while Peter is going under, Jesus grabs him in that moment. Can I tell you that the only reason Peter was able to be saved was because his imagination put him in the water? That he's sinking in water, but the only reason he got saved is because his imagination put him out there where Jesus was. That the very thing that put him at risk was also the very thing that saved his life. Think about it. If, 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 if the boat and the other 11 disciples had started to sink, while they thought they were safe, they actually would have been in trouble because they weren't close enough for Jesus to grab. And I tell you that Jesus looks at Peter and tells him, you got so little faith for looking at the wind and the waves. But if Peter has little faith and he's walking, then that meant the other 11 didn't have none because they didn't even try. I'd rather have little faith that allows me to see the miracle I never experienced before than to be stuck in what seems safe. And when that safe things fail, I got nothing to save me. Beloved, when you walk by faith, and dare to imagine greater, you are actually safer on the water than you are in the boat. Why? Because that's where Jesus is. And if you're trying to find where Jesus is in 2021, he ain't in the safe spaces. You're trying to find and see Jesus working in your life in this year. He is not in the safe space. Historic First Baptist Church, hear me and hear me well. If you're trying to look for Jesus in this particular season, in this dispensation, and in this world, he is not in the safe spots. Christ will always be found in the places that require your faith. Come here, Hebrews. Without faith, it's impossible. To please God. And those that come to him must first believe that he is. And a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Christ is always going to push you beyond safety into trust. And if you're having a difficulty or difficult time finding Christ in this stormy season, it ain't because he ain't available. 
you can't find and see Jesus in this stormy moment is not because he's out to lunch. It might be because you're still in the boat. It might be because you're still on the safe spots. It might be because you have chosen comfort over connection. Can I tell you, it's time to wake up your imagination and go after Jesus on the water. It's time to dream again. It's time to believe again. It's time to reset some things and to prepare yourself to dream differently in a different environment. But when you risk going after him, you'll always be rewarded by finding him. I'm almost done tonight. I just want you to know you can imagine something greater. God has already imagined it for you. But, 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 but you got to imagine it's possibilities based on God's capacity and not yours. You, you, you got to know imagination is always going to be risky, but the reward's going to be greater. Here's the last lesson Peter would teach us tonight. Peter would teach us that imagination always leads to new revelation. Yeah, uh, uh, that, that, that when I dream and believe greater, I learn to see Christ in ways I've never seen him before. That, that, that very nature of daring to imagine puts us in a place of discovery. See, pursuing God could be what pushes us beyond our limits and makes us trust God at a deeper level. And that experience always makes you learn something new and life-changing about God. You're never going to learn lessons about God in safe spaces. You're always going to learn them when you dream and look a little different. You got your Bible? You need it. Verse 32, text says, after Jesus saves Peter, they both get back into the boat, and the wind stopped. Now, the text here is written in different translations, but it's, they're all written so as to link Jesus and Peter getting into the boat to the stoppage of the wind. It's almost like as soon as they got safe in the boat, the wind began to stop. It, it, it's like the faith lesson is over, so Jesus dismisses the teaching assistant, the wind. It seems simple, but it's a great teaching moment for the disciples. Because it says, while they were struggling in the moment, Jesus had been in control the whole time. That the imagination of Peter revealed more of what Jesus was able to do. And can I tell you, Christ wants to show you and I what he can do this year. Oh, I know you've got accolades and you've got rewards and memories of past seasons. I know you've got testimonies in, in previous eras and decades of church history and your own personal history of great things God has done. I came to tell you, faith in God ought to take you from faith to faith and from glory to glory. That you ought not be stuck and stagnant and satisfied on past victories when there are more victories and successes that await you. And you ain't got to skip years to see it. You ain't got to wait till things get better. You can see God do miracles in a storm. You got your Bible? You need it one more time. Verse 33, here's what the text says. text says, after, after the wind stopped, the disciples worship and declare that Jesus really is the Son of God. The, 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 the imagination of Peter at work again shows not only what Jesus can do, but because Peter operated in his imagination that was faith-filled, this experience also ends up revealing more of who Jesus is. They come to this consensus in the boat that Jesus really is the Son of God. Now, can I tell you, this declaration wasn't news to them. Christ's been telling them from day one, I am the son of God. But when Peter stepped on the water, it allowed the disciples to see Christ not as he, they had heard him, but to see it for themselves. Christ wants to show somebody who's doubted him who Christ really is. Christ wants to show Jackson, who's doubted him, 
what Christ is able to do and who Christ really is. But what you got to realize is, First Baptist, your imagination, your willingness to believe, your faithfulness to the vision God has provided is going to be the gateway to somebody else's revelation of who Christ really is. That Christ wants to show himself off to the city and he decided to tell First Baptist, come on out and walk on the water. That Christ wants to show himself to this area and to this region and you have been selected like Peter to be the one who walks on water and shows them what is still possible. God, I hope you get this tonight. I, I need you to know imagination for believers is not just a hobby. There's a purpose and a plan behind our faith increase and faith invigoration. There's a purpose and a plan behind why God sets up and sovereignly selects us for particular scenarios to show other people how strong our Savior is. There's a reason behind why you are positioned the way you're positioned right now. God is challenging you to step out and to believe afresh, to believe anew, and to walk in the power of of the imagination God has given you. Because imagination for believers ain't just about showing off. It's always about pointing towards getting to where Jesus is. Peter doesn't want to walk on water just for the sake of walking on water. He asks, can I come out there to where you are? Beloved, that's the question tonight. What new ways can you chase after Christ this year? What new ways can you go after God this year? Because, beloved, I want to tell you, when you decide to go after God, when you make up your mind to chase after the Savior, when you settle it in your heart uh, that God's way is only the way you desire to go, when you make up your mind uh, that I'll chase after God uh, regardless of the surroundings I have. When you make up your mind uh, that for God I'll live and uh, for God I'll die. Uh, when you decide to chase Christ uh, and make him the object of your affection, you will discover you're not limited by your issues. Uh, you're only limited by your imagination. Uh, but the good news is uh, if you decide to chase after Christ, uh, you will uh, always find the one that you're chasing after. Uh, if you make up your mind uh, to go after God, You'll always find the God that you're going after. God will, will not hide himself. God will not play cat and mouse with you. If you go after God, you will, you will find him. And the reason you'll find him is because while you've been chasing after him, you will discover he has been chasing after you. Come here, Bible. The Bible says Peter goes after Jesus, but the only reason Peter could find Jesus was because by three in the morning, the second watch of the night, the Bible says Jesus was already walking, heading their way. Can I tell Tell you, God will not let you chase him by yourself. You will discover that while you're going after him, since the time you've been born, he's been chasing after you. From the time you said yes, he's been sovereignly stalking you. From the time you committed to First Baptist, God has been running you down trying to see if you got faith to believe trying to see if you're fed up with your everyday and ordinary trying to see if you'll trust him in a brand new way can I tell you tonight if you chase after God 
and let your faith feel imagination run wild eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it entered into the hearts of man what God has in store for you is there anybody that is watching me tonight that can testify I'm tired of staying in the boat I will go after God in a brand new way even if that means a reset even if it means trying something different even if it means stepping in the territory I've never walked in before I just believe if God be for me he still still more than the world against me is there anybody watching me tonight that can testify I'm standing on God's word that I'm more than a conqueror through him that loves me I still believe God can do anything but fail if you believe it tonight do me one favor lift your excited hands open up your excited mouth and tell your God I will chase after you come on tell God I will go where you want me to go I will do what you want me to do I will trust in the Lord I will trust in in the Lord until I die I'm going to stay on the battlefield I'm going to treat everybody right I'm going to do what you call me to do and in the end I just believe your will is what's best for me. If that's your testimony, open up your mouth, put your hands together, and praise our God. Say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes. Hey, hey. say yes. Dare to imagine. Your God still has power. Your God has not changed his mind nor his plans. You are part of what God desires to do in the world. God's purpose, God's plan on a personal level is always contextualized. What does that mean? It means that First Baptist, you are not just called to follow Jesus sitting on Martin Luther King Jr. Drive in Jackson, Tennessee just so you can show and talk about how close you are to God. No, you've been assigned this context. You've been placed in this space because there's something God is doing in you that God wants to do that touches everything around you. And that's what vision does. It brings the culmination of heaven on earth. That's what Jesus prayed, that that, that God's will be done on earth as it is the heaven. And vision helps bring the meeting of the two so that people on earth start to see what's possible when heaven invades the context. You and I, as the Lord's church, become emissaries and ambassadors of the something new God wants to usher into the world. Requires us to believe that God can do exactly what God said God can do. But it also requires us to prepare ourselves. What good is vision if you're not prepared to walk in it? What good is strategy, plans, direction if you're not committed to the journey that it takes to make it come to pass. Tonight, my assignment is not just to share the word, it's also to pray a prayer of consecration tonight. 
The prayer is going to be that God will anoint leaders afresh with the energy, the inertia, and the momentum needed to carry out what God has said. Let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you for loving us enough that you trust us with your vision. God, we believe that vision, as Andy Stanley describes it, is a picture of what could be backed by the compulsion that it should be. It's a picture of what's possible, but only possible engineered and, and empowered by divine power. It's a great vision. But one of the reasons we know it's from God is that we can't do it by ourselves. We need your help. So Lord, tonight, as leaders, we submit ourselves to you. We set ourselves aside. We consecrate our minds, our bodies, our tongues, our hearts for the sake of fulfilling and accomplishing what you've set before us. God, I pray for Pastor William Watson. Pray, God, that you'll anoint him afresh. I pray, God, that the yoke of your spirit will rest on him in a supernatural way. That God, he even when he gets tired, he won't get weary. That he'll stay focused and faithful to the plan that you've set before him. Anoint him afresh. Give him power, but also give him endurance. Give him courage and give him candor. Give him strong legs so he can walk. But give him a powerful tongue so he can talk. Allow him to lead your people through the preaching, teaching, and the embodiment of your word. God, I pray for every leader tonight. Pray that you will consecrate them afresh. God, anoint their minds to be able to understand what is being shared. And God, even if they don't understand it, I pray that you'll anoint their hearts to trust you and to walk by faith. I pray, God, that you will expand their imaginations tonight. Give them the ability to believe beyond what they can see. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you'll anoint their tongues, God, that they will become vessels of optimism and not cynicism. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you'll help them to become amplifiers of the vision. I pray, Lord God, that you will awaken them afresh to what is possible what is needed, what is necessary. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, anything that seeks to come in between the fulfillment of that vision and this moment right now, we cast it down in the name of Jesus. Plead the blood over every leader, over their families. God, even leaders in this season are walking wounded. They've had to grieve, they've had to cry, they've had to miss important moments in their lives and their families and they are struggling with questions of their own. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that as they walk out the vision you've given them, that God, you'll give them the peace that surpasses all understanding. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you'll cover them from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. I pray for Holy Spirit filled Zoom meetings. I pray for leadership that understands the weight that Pastor Watson has to carry and don't let him carry it by himself but they hold his arms up and they walk triumphantly into victory some victories you'll make happen and they'll never have to do anything other victories God they'll have to fight they'll have to war but God I pray in every victory in every battle that your spirit lead and guide. Anoint them for the days ahead. Empower them for the moments that you have created. This moment is destined and designed by God. And so Lord, we trust you 
Help us to operate in ways where you will trust us. We pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, as the praise team shares, we want you to, again, be thoughtful about the message, but also be responsive to the message. There may be someone who's not already a part of this family of faith. We invite you now to make a decision about your relationship with Jesus Christ. Not only do we want you to be in the virtual space of worship, we want you to be in the family of faith. So tonight, as Pastor Faison has prayed over us and prayed for us, we invite you into relationship with our Savior. Because again, in order to join what is the church, you first have to join in relationship with Jesus Christ. And so we offer Christ to you. We offer him to you on tonight. So if you're not saved, you need to be saved. If you are saved, you need to belong somewhere. You know, if it's, right, if it's wrong to be out of church, you've heard us say it, then it's right to be in church. And you need to make a decision tonight, we pray, to be a part of the family of faith again, to come off of the peripheral of viewing ministry from the sidelines and the work of the kingdom from the sidelines and say today, I'm reimagining this moment. I'm going to awaken that three-year-old with pencil and paper in my life and begin to see God, to see Christ, to see the person of the Holy Spirit and the work that he has entrusted and gifted into me in a whole new light. I've experienced failures, I've experienced hurt, I've experienced pain outside and inside of the church, but tonight, I want to reinvigorate that relationship, reignite that flame of love afresh. And so we invite you again to be a part of this fellowship, this family. There are ways you can do it. You can call us here at the church, 731-422-2751. Or you can email us at newmembers at historicfirstbaptistchurch.org. Our leadership is awaiting your email and we'll respond to you. We'll reach out to you and walk you through what is that moment of salvation. We'll walk you through that moment of rededication. And if you're in need of prayer, we'll pray with you. You can email us at prayer at historicfirstbaptistchurch.org. And our prayer ministry is awaiting those requests so that we can pray with you, walk with you fervently until God responds and until you recognize how God has responded. So again, there's several ways for you to connect with us. Even if you're on our social media platforms, just drop us a message in any of those platforms so that we again can respond to you. So that you can again achieve all that God has for you and help us achieve all that God has for us in 2021. Come on family, virtually and in this space, let's celebrate Pastor John Faison for the word that he imparted in our hearts on tonight. How God used him in such a wonderfully magnificent way to speak to our imagination, to reignite our thoughts, to dream big, to think big, because we have a big God. You've heard me say it, I've shared it before, me and Pastor Face, and even when he was talking about, again, just this message and what they're doing and what we are thinking about doing here that God has laid before us that you ought to think big with a big God. Uh, why think small with a big God? If I could get $20 from my brother, then why ask God for $20? I'm thinking big. I'm asking God for everything. As I told our finance team after we got through again, revising the budget for 2021 based on the vision of ministries and ministry leaders and the work we have to do here at the church. Uh, they were sharing, Pastor, uh, the Lord blessed us last year. I said, the Lord going to bless us again this year. I said, because here's what I do after we get through. I go home and say, Lord, here's your budget. Help us to reach you through the hearts of your people so that all of us can collectively participate 
in what you're doing right here on earth. That's our assignment, ladies and gentlemen. And I believe God is going to honor the work that he's laid before us as we walk it out. I love what Pastor Faison said as we get ready to close out for tonight. As he was preaching about Peter and sharing the request that Peter made. If you heard him, he shared it simply like this. Peter never asked Jesus to walk on water. He asked Jesus, can I come to you? Read it. It's in your Bible. You heard him say it. Peter says, Lord, if it's you bid me to come to you, come where you are. He never said, Lord, can I walk on water? And I think that's the mistake people make about ministry. We're trying to walk on water instead of reaching Jesus. And that's what resetting this year, that's what our vision is about, reset. That's what it's about. It's about continuing to head in the direction of the Savior who is able and capable of providing what we need. Sometimes we'll fall, sometimes we'll falter. There are failures and pitfalls along the way. But here's what I love about that passage, Pastor, you bless me. And that is this. Uh, he can't catch me if I'm in the boat. Because I'm already caught by something that I believe that can sustain me. But when I risk it all to come to him, then I realized in that moment that the boat was not keeping me. It was always the Savior who was close by. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to risk it all in vision and in the ministry on the God who is able. Listen, we're getting ready to get out of here. Uh, my brother, my friend, thank you so much, Pastor John Faison, uh, for coming down here. I know your schedule is highly busy even in the pandemic, but again, Thoughtfully, I was talking to the Lord over our time off in December, and even in my time of sickness, Lord, uh, who is it uh, that you would have to speak into our lives and speak over us and launch us out into the deep? And his heart matched my heart with the thought of John Faison, and I'm thankful to him. I'm thankful to his family. I'm thankful to the Watson Grove family for allowing him to share this time with us. And we're about to send him back safely to you. Amen. But we thank God for you allowing him to share this space and time with us. I'm thankful to all of our leaders. I'm thankful to every team. I'm thankful to our music ministry tonight for again blessing us in song. I'm thankful to our media team, my staff. Listen, it takes a whole lot of people to make ministry happen even in a pandemic. And I'm thankful that they were willing to sacrifice to make sure we could worship in this space for our deacons of all of our officers we are grateful listen as we get ready to leave this place don't forget this is the year of reset and I told you these past Wednesdays we'll be resetting our policies and procedures on the other side of what is this pandemic because ministry will change we'll be resetting staff because there are things that we have to go after that God has laid before us in this new season of ministry and work We'll be resetting our ministries, making sure that our teams are focused and goal-oriented as it relates to what God is calling us to do, to reach lives for his glory and for their good. So I'm looking forward. I'm excited. I hope you are as well about what God is getting ready to do. Listen, it's a wonderful time. Let's get ready to get out of here and let's get some rest. Wherever you are, look this way and let me bless you as we leave this place. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. And make his face to smile upon you and be gracious unto him. May the Lord lift the countenance of his presence upon you and give you his peace in your laughter and in your leisure and your frustration and even in your tears until we shall all one day sit at the feet of Jesus where there is no sunrise or sunset. Listen, family, God bless you. I love you. I'm looking forward to seeing you Sunday morning as we remember those upon whose shoulders we stand during our service of memorial. God bless you. Have a great rest of your week. Be blessed.